Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Rogue ST Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson, and this is your Golf Central update. Well, this week marks the Tour's 75th playing of the Charles Schwab Challenge. It's the annual event at Colonial Country Club that returns with plenty of stars on hand trying to claim the right to wear the plaid jacket. Jason Kokrak is your defending champion, so let's get out there and join Rex Hoggard. Thank you very much, Anna. The news today was all about Bryson DeChambeau, who has withdrawn from this week's event. Now, I had a chance to catch up with a member of his management team who said they feel like he is making progress, but they needed to give it one more week. And there was a level of confidence that he will be ready to play next week's memorial. And his manager pointed out that Mirfield Village was always supposed to be his return to competition following hand surgery. So they feel like he is right back on schedule. Now, you just mentioned the defending champion, Jason Kokrak. We had a chance to catch up with him this afternoon and ask him how much confidence he brings back to this golf course. I think any time that you uh, enjoy a golf course or you, you have success around a place, you, you come back with uh, some good vibes and uh, some good mojo coming into the week. So uh, capping off that win here last year, coming back, uh, you have a lot of great memories and um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. What did you do so well here last year that you hope to replicate? Um, I drove it really, really well last year. Um, you know, this is a place that, you know, it's tough to play out of the rough from. Um, I kept it in the fairway, kept it in front of me, um, hit a lot of quality iron shots. So um, just gave myself a lot of looks uh, around this golf course. I know it doesn't take a, you know, a ton under par to, to win here, but, um, you know, when the driver's working, I'm putting it in the fairway. I take advantage of the par fives and, uh, you know, take some bunkers out of play. Now, Jason is one of many players who made the trip down from Tulsa to Fort Worth for this week's event. And to make that transition from a major championship venue to a PGA Tour course, it's a transition that's made a little bit easier by the similarities in the Perry Maxwell designs. This is definitely types of golf course that I truly love. you got to be extremely accurate off the tee and then coming into those greens. Uh, like you said, I think Southern Hills is like the big brother of, of Colonial, but they both hold the ground. Uh, really well and if it's windy out here it can be extremely tough as well. It's very rare that we go from a Perry Maxwell design last week to another Perry Maxwell design this week so you're going to see a lot of the same visuals, a lot of the same bunkering, um, the way the holes are routed. Now this is obviously a little shorter golf course but a little rain today and a little rain maybe tomorrow uh, might play a little bit longer but all in all you, he's huge on hitting the golf ball, tighter fairways. I grew up on a Perry Maxwell design, so I'm, I'm used and familiar with it. And that's why I loved last week and I love coming this week. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of similarities with the you know same designers. Um, Colonial is just a little bit smaller version, I would say, from Southern Hills. Uh, a little bit tighter, not quite as long, but really similar shots into the greens. Uh, tricky lives from the Bermuda Rough and, you know, small little greens that kind of sit up, little sections. Um, so yeah, it's a really similar style of golf that's going to do well here. Yeah, I could see some similarities be between the two. Um, this one, uh, you know, is not quite as long, but, um, you know, Southern Hills was a, a great layout, but uh, this one's uh, a, a historic place too. So um, I tend to like the, these kind of shorter uh, golf courses with a little bit tighter fairways. I mean, I you know, everybody thinks I'm, a, you know, a bomber and I like those those big golf, big ballparks, but um, you know, I grew up on a short, little quirky golf course. So I, uh, not to say this place is quirky, but you know, tree-lined, small, small fairways, small greens, and you know, you just gotta, you know, see your shot. Last week's champion Justin Thomas was also on property at Colonial today. He showed up a little bit before lunch, got some practice in, and he actually went out and played a few practice holes in a light rain. And it seems like the celebration is over, and he's ready to get back to business. Anna. Well, this week, the LPGA Tour heads to Shadow Creek in Las Vegas for the Bank of Hope LPGA Match Play. This is the second edition of the LPGA's only match play event of the season. Last year's tournament was the first match play event on the LPGA Tour since 2017, where Ali Ewing is your defending champion. So, with more from Nevada, let's get out to Grant Boone and Morgan Pressel. Anna, thank you. In a city that loves to stay up late, we've got an early start on the LPGA Tour this week. It's the Bank of Hope LPGA match play from mystical Shadow Creek here in Vegas, about 20 miles from the Strip. And Morgan, it is great to have match play back on the LPGA Tour. We've had it for decades, but it came back for the first time in five or six years last year. Really didn't disappoint with Ali Ewing defeating Sofia Popov in that championship match. How much different does a player prepare for a 
week like this than a normal week. Yeah, I've always loved match play. I'd get excited to play match play. And there are players in this field that feel that way about playing match play. You really just have to change your mindset when it comes to match play. You can be more aggressive. It's much more in the moment, hole to hole. Only matters what your opponent is doing, who is playing in the group with you. You don't really have to worry about anybody else on the golf course. So it's more mental preparation than a physical preparation heading into match play. I mean, the golf course, there is not a speck of grass, a blade of grass out of place out on the on out here at Shadow Creek. It is spectacular and the players are raving about it as they did last year and just excited to tee it up in, in a little bit of a different, more fun format in my opinion. No wonder you like match play. You want a U.S. amateur and a Solheim Cup stalwart for the U.S. Let's take a look at the tournament format here at the Bank of Hope LPGA match play. If you saw the men play the Dell Technologies match play down in Austin, very similar. 64 players. You're going to break them into 16 groups of four and you're going to have that round robin format. Every player plays every other in her group and then the 16 who advance out of that will make it to the round of 16 comes Saturday morning then you go to the quarterfinals on Saturday night the semifinals Sunday morning and then you get the championship match come Sunday afternoon a huge week next week the U.S. Women's Open uh, and there are 19 players of these 64 who aren't yet in Pine Needles next week so a huge opportunity and if you talk huge opportunities, certainly you look at Young and Chun in on a sponsor's invite. She gets the top seed, Minji Lee. We said it at the Founders Cup a couple of weeks ago, the Cognizant Founders Cup, that really no one in golf is playing better than Minji Lee. She got the W, her seventh win. It's a tough test for Young and Chun, but a huge opportunity for the youngster. Yeah, she, well, Minji is the hottest player on tour, uh, has been all year, just so close, knocking on the door, finally getting the victory uh, last week at the Founders Cup. And, but Young and Chun, has nothing to lose going out and you never know. I mean, I'm sure Minji's a little bit tired coming off of the emotional win at Founders Cup. Even when I talked to her caddy earlier today, that's kind of, you know, a little bit sluggish, just as you would expect uh, coming off a little bit of an emotional win. And so you never know what could happen tomorrow. Ten years ago, Minji won the U.S. Girls Junior. There are a lot of players here with Solheim Cup experience in match play who've also had great experience in USGA events and in other big events playing this unique format. We've got first round coverage coming your way early out here at 1030 a.m. Some folks will just be coming in from a big night and we can't wait to bring it to you from Shadow Creek. Well, over to the Women's NCAA Championships. The semifinals were on Tuesday. The top seed Stanford moves on to the finals. They defeated Auburn 3-2. Roseanne with no problem in her match, beating Michael O'Berry 5-4. Aileen Crowther also picking up a crucial point for the Cardinal. And in the other semifinal, it's the Oregon Ducks moving on, beating Texas A&M 4-1. The Ducks were both Pac-12 champions and winners of their NCAA regional. Even though they are the number two team in the country, they might be the hottest program in the nation heading into the final. So here are the final matches. It all starts at 4.35 p.m. Eastern on Golf Channel. You've got two Pac-12 rivals with the national championship on the line. The number one seed, Stanford, trying to become the first top seed to win ever at the NCAA Women's National Golf Championships. Thanks for watching. This is your Golf Central Update.